Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estme. Yesterday, we saw that Jesus often referred to himself as the Son of Man. Son of Man signifies his relationship with us. Son of Man represents the fact that he knows, he understands, and he experienced firsthand our struggles. And because he is the Son of Man, this makes Jesus the perfect judge. But first, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise your name because you, being the Son of Man, is our judge. In Jesus we pray. Amen. From the moment that she was born in Kenya, the odds were against Edna Gwagi. Soon after she was born, the country went through a long period of terrible drought that caused many people to go hungry. And also, Aguagi's comment that girls were not given the priority to go to school is an understatement. However, things started to prove for Aguagi when she got a chance to move to the U.S. and get a formal education. She even went on to earn her master's degree in social work. This helped her for her life's work, which she says is going back to a home and literally giving food to kids. And after everything that she's went through as a child, all Aguagi wanted to do to do with her, uh, with her life was to be there with the poor for the poor children of the world. Aguagi is still working to make this happen through her job as the chief impact officer at Rise Against Hunger. Now, Rise Against Hunger is an international hunger relief group that works to end world hunger by the year 2030. And interestingly, Aguagi can teach the poor with the understanding of someone who has been there that with education and hard work, anyone can be anything they want and change the world. You see, Aguagi's story is inspiring because she understands what it means to be hungry and uneducated. She understood what it meant to be poor. And now that she has succeeded, succeeded in educating herself, she was able to cross over. And, and even though she's no longer poor, she went back to the community that she came from to help others achieve what she did. And this is the same story of Jesus. Jesus lived a life where everything around him was in sin. He understands what it means to be in despair. He understands what it means to be weak in the flesh. He understands what it means to be betrayed, hated, beaten, and abused. He understands what it means to be human in a sinful world. And shortly after he resurrected, this is what happened to the Son of Man. Our son of man. Acts 1 verses 9 through 11. And when he had said these things and they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taking up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The same Jesus, the son of man, the one who walked the dusty streets of Nazareth, who ministered in the crowded streets of Jerusalem, who healed the sick in the villages of Israel and preached on the grassy hillsides of Galilee is coming again. He is coming again for you and for me. And, and what I find interesting is precise, precisely what the Son of Man um, has been doing since he left earth. Daniel 7 verses 9 and 10 gives us some clues. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of the, of the fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him and ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment and the books were open. You see, this passage shows that the Father, 
who is described as the Ancient of Days. He sits on his heavenly throne and the judgment books are open to him. He is ready to give the consequence and the rewards for the actions of all living creatures on this planet. And, and the beauty is that we can find the gospel in verses 13 and 14. And I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all prophets, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. So guess who is the one? who is presented and accepted by the ancient days. Guess who gets to sit on the throne on with the ancient of days? Guess who is the one whose books are, of judgment are open before him? Daniel states that it is the son of man. In other words, it's Jesus. Jesus will be our righteous judge. He is on our side. As the son of man, he understands what we have gone through. So he's vindicating for us as the son of God. He is pleading for our case to the father. He claims that his blood was shed for us by faith. We have accepted his righteous life as our own. And because we can confess our sins through the help of the Holy Spirit, we repent and make a complete 180, change our lives. And so that when God judges as righteous, it is because the son of man is righteous. Brothers and sisters, the great news is that Jesus is the son of man. He is also the judge of the world. This is not a judge who is against you, but he sympathizes with you. He understands you in your pain. And now with his current power and position in the heavenly courts, he wants to save you. Please take encouragement in the words that's found in Hebrews 10, verses 19 to 25. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Saints of God, keep the faith.